I've become a grand, grandfather these last few years, um, I begin to pray not just for my grandchildren, but my grandchildren's grandchildren, if, if God tarries, you know, if Lord tarries. And my thought is, there are, it, it, because of God, there will be prayers that I can pray that will outlive my life. Fruit from those prayers, no credit to me, but fruit from those prayers can come in the lives of people not even born yet. So I think we, we, the picture frame, I love some small, you know, I have some small picture frames at home. They're very nice, but boy, these, you know, the, those huge screens, they're just beautiful. I think we need to extend the, the, the limits of our picture frame of prayer as to what God wants. We just see the particular problem or trial or trouble that someone's in. And of course, we're going to pray for them and that the problem or trial or trouble goes away. But to what end? So uh, one simple thing I encourage people to do is when you think you're done praying, add the words, so that. Lord, heal this woman so that she can not just come back to church, but bring her gifts, her spiritual gifts to church. Or heal this man so that he can be the father or grandfather or uncle or whoever he needs, Sunday school teacher he needs to be, so that more people can hear, so that they can, et cetera, et cetera. You mentioned uh, Walter Wink, and that immediately brought an association into my mind of... Uh Spiritual warfare. He wrote a lot on, yes. of course. He's written a lot of uh, the, the powers and uh, mm -hmm. principalities. And I, I'm not convinced that his understanding of the principalities and powers is really what the Bible. I, I okay. th there's some 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 uh, differences that I have with that. Sure. But nevertheless, I think he's done a great service to the church in making us more aware of the whole dynamic of yeah. uh, uh, principalities and, and powers and how they interact in history and, yes. and how they can affect the institutions and corporations and nations and so on and so forth. So this whole idea of uh, prayer and uh, spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that, that for some, that may be the sort of the purview of uh, Charismatics and Pentecostals. No, not because anymore. They, no, you guys are teaching us some things. We're, we're taking some I, I good think that, things. Of course, and I, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's not a mon at, all, at all. I think if it, if it were a monopoly, it would be a tragic thing because that belongs to the body of Christ. Absolutely. How, how, do, how do you see that? How, you, perhaps more from an evangelical point of view, yeah, I, don't, I don't even know whether that's fair to you. But It um, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you see prayer and uh, spiritual yeah. warfare? What... Interaction. Well, the thing that comes to my mind, I mean, it's such a big topic. Let me start here and see if we want to take it somewhere else. Obviously, uh, Ephesians 6, the, the armor of God, you know, helmet of salvation, all these different mm -hmm. body images of the protective armor. But then he says, uh, you know, take the sword of the spirit, which is, and the real grammar there is, is the word that God gives you in that moment. It's the rhema word. And, and so I think a lot of maybe just evangelicals, I don't know, but a I grew up understanding that to be take the sword of the spirit, meaning grab your Bible. I don't, I don't mean this unkindly, but this, this is the sword of the spirit. And it is. I mean, the logos is, our, is God's word. It's Jesus. But I think what he's trying to say there is let me open it to one of the pages and bold print one of the verses. In other words, this is your word for this particular mm -hmm. Situation. By the way, that's what warfare. I meant earlier. It was Rhema, not Kairos. Well, Kairos is another one of those words, but it's yes. Rhema. Uh, it's yeah. that word, that timely word of God. Yeah. That, that I, I correct and, that now. Thank you. And, and that's, that's a powerful word. And, but what's interesting is after he says, uh, you know, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Rhema of God, the word that, my, my paraphrase is, the word that God gives you by his Spirit in the moment for the situation. Mm -hmm. Take that sword of the Spirit. And then he starts to talk about prayer. So I'm believing that just because some of the uh, Bible versions create a new paragraph and a new topic, I'm thinking he's going from... The continual... Uh, he's still talking about mind. the armor. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is, you know, the, the soldier would say, okay, I've got my sword, but now what are my instructions, mm -hmm. Captain? What am I supposed to do? Well, you take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word that I will give you. I will give you your instructions and go forth in prayer. And he talks about prayer that really results in evangelism. So I think we've segmented these things so much so mm -hmm. that uh, we, we, we need to reconnect them. And that's why, again, kind of maybe coming full circle a little bit, I'm trying to do more teaching on prayer evangelism. Evangelism without prayer is not as strong as it can be and maybe even ineffective. But prayer that never leads to someone doing evangelism means the club just stays the club and no one gets at it. In one of your writings, you mention... Uh Joshua before Jericho yeah. and you said it was perhaps was that perhaps the first prayer walk uh, maybe um, yeah uh, but tell me a little because there you use again that same yeah. idea of um, God comes he gives instructions 
yeah. specific instructions. And in this case, it was for a war. Absolutely. It was really for a battle. Yeah. And it was for tearing down these very powerful, well powerful said. Uh, walls. And uh, it required instruction, rhema, yes, words. Yes, exactly. From That's what came. God. And then, of course, obedience, listening, and yep. executing. And, and well, and, and patience, perseverance, walking around every day, walking mm -hmm. around seven mm -hmm. times. They're probably being ridiculed. You guys are crazy. So it takes a lot of faith. A couple of things about that. One is that... Uh, uh, we need more Joshuas like that, uh, men and women, you know, in leadership who, uh, while the rest of us are sleeping, so maybe literally, but also figuratively, uh, they understand where the battle is. And uh, humanly speaking, if, if, if this wasn't a, a spiritual uh, story, he is a good general going to survey the situation and the fight of the next day would be based on what strategy he came up with then. Well, of course, we know that we need to come to God for our strategy, but in this case, Christ came to him. One of the things that sticks out to me in that is Joshua says, well, in effect, well, whose side are you on? And my paraphrase of his answer is, no, no, I'm the side. You know, it's not whose side am mm -hmm. I on, you or him. It's, it's about me. What am I doing? This is my land, this is my story, so to speak. And so I think that put Joshua in a humble place to listen and receive those instructions. So I, I tend to be kind of simple. You know, I just said a little earlier, add so that to the end of your prayer so it goes beyond just the temporary thing. Another thing I say is start your prayers by, you know, praise God. It's all, I think you always begin with praising God because he's worthy of praise. But to praise God changes us, at least makes us more ready to receive his, his faith that we need. But then ask him some questions. I think we jump in too quickly and start telling God things that he already knows. Mm. If we would just stop and say, Lord, uh, what am I gonna do tomorrow? How am I gonna face that situation? Uh, we've got all these opportunities, which one should I pick? What, what is your heart? What is your will? Mm. Reveal your will to me. If we'd spend more time asking, then of course, you ask a question, you need to shut up and listen. If we would have that posture a lot more, I think we'd see some more Jericho situations than we're seeing now in the spiritual warfare context. I think instead we're, we're praying against things uh, that are okay. It's, uh, yes, and maybe that's even effective, but it's like we've gone out, and, and the, I wonder if sometimes the general is saying, would you guys come back here for a moment? You're, doing, you're trying to do some good things, but I've, I've got some different instructions mm. for you. You want to go to the front door, I'm going to tell you how to get in the back door, or, or mm. whatever. Mm -hmm. so, well, anyway, I'm preaching yeah, now. No, 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 no. That, that's, that, that's very, very powerful, very illuminating. And again, here's, so we've, we've talked about uh, prayer and spiritual warfare. What about... Uh, prayer and evangelism, and then spiritual warfare as well. And, and um, the fact that uh, today, uh, modern culture in the West particularly, um, is uh, like the walls of Jericho. In Spanish, it says, cerrados, bien cerrados. It means the, the walls of Jericho were, and the doors were closed, really closed. Really closed. Extre it, so it's a, it was a very, it's a very emphatic, I'm not sure whether the English... Uh, expresses that sense Maybe of... Maybe not I mean, as if, but I could hear the it's, em emphasis. It's an absolute yeah. emphasis of, you know, these walls were impenetrable. They, yeah. and, and we know historically they were very Huge. thick, very yeah, high, thick. Yeah. almost unbreakable. And uh, that was the task. And evidently the resources of the Israelites were not up to that task. And in a sense, what we find today, the mind of a modern Western culture is like those walls of Jericho. It's extremely well closed. Yeah. It, um, like no other time in human history, a modern uh, Western culture is uh, singularly equipped to resist our puny efforts to, through apologetics and other things uh, to try to convince people that Christ is the Son of God and that uh, yeah. we need to humble ourselves before Him. I don't think we're going to win that battle through... Um, just the powerful arguments. Argu and, I was going to say uh, the same thing. You know, arguments and, aren't going to do and, it. And uh, sophisticated uh, uh, f marketing techniques and uh, strong uh, facilities and so on and so forth. There yeah. has to be more than that. I agree. And so I, I do sense that um, if we are going to come upon the strategies, the new strategies that are required, mm -hmm. they have to come from God. Absolutely. The energy has to come from God. And therefore we need to come into prayer. So there's an element of... Uh, Spiritual warfare, because I think it's That's demonic good. resistance mm -hmm. uh, and an infusion almost of uh, rebelliousness into the heart of Western culture against God. And uh, also increased capacity to resist God, in, uh, a, a lack of uh, power on the part of the church 
So the only thing that uh, it seems to me that's possible is prayer, uh, spiritual warfare, yes. hearing from God, yes. getting the technology and the techniques directly from Him through prayer. So there's this connection between that's good. evangelism, I'm glad spiritual to hear that. warfare, yeah. that's very helpful. prayer, listening from Him yeah. and getting the strategies from yeah. God and executing those strategies. Yeah, and, and those strategies might change different times, even in similar circumstances. So I, I think what God wants is our dependency on Him. And, and uh, I, I'm speaking for myself. As soon as I learn, a, for lack of a better word, a technique or a way of praying, and maybe even a time God bless that, I just want to keep going back and striking the rock a second time when He hasn't given me that exact same instruction. So I think part of the spiritual warfare thing is um, not just learning someone else's technique that God blessed. Sometimes a little sarcasm in me saying it this way, but it's like if, if Elijah went up to, the, to Mount Carmel and uh, you know, did the, uh, the thing with Baal, prophets of Baal, uh, in our culture, he'd come down, he'd write a book, do a DVD and go on a lecture circuit, and we'd all be climbing up mountains and pouring water on false gods. And, and, we'd be, and none of us would see anything happen because God didn't give that instruction. So I think we have to be very careful. But what you're saying is, listen, get those instructions from God, and then you know, go in faith and do it. God is infinitely creative. Yeah, that's he never runs out of uh, strategies. Mm -hmm.